Dr. Porde, with about 40,000 dead and more than 700,000 coronavirus patients, the United States has become the epicenter of the virus. What is the current situation of the state? As you mentioned, numbers are pretty high, uh, and I am hoping that we have hit the plateau, at least that's what the statistics seem to be like, that uh, we have hit the plateau, and uh, hopefully in the near future we are going to start seeing the numbers decreasing. And one of the main reasons for this is because we are keeping social distancing and then avoiding those areas that could potentially be contaminated. Unfortunately, New York, one of the great cities out there, it's, it, did, it did sound and seem like it had some difficulties, but I'm hoping they, they recovered from it and, and everything, everything is going good because you have to also look at those people that produce these things, right? If, uh, if they are over their capacity, they may not be able to get there to provide all these uh, protective equipment. So uh, it goes back and forth. Uh, so far, only people with symptoms have been tested. Is there a need for mass testing around the world? Is there enough capacity? And how will this help? Right. So when it comes down to mass testing, uh, I think it, it is important. If we can, I hope that we should do it. But again, it is difficult, you know, the world is so big and there are a good amount of people living in the world. However, uh, mass testing, it's not only a number, you know, it's not just knowing how many people got infected and they're positively tested. Uh, it is important to categorize uh, people, those that are positively tested and hospitalized, those that have recovered, those that are positively tested and stay at home, and obviously those that are negatively tested. And uh, I believe if we categorize these group of people, it may and it probably will help us to go back to normality faster or sooner than later. Uh, but this is going to take time. Uh, some epidemiologists say that it will take years to produce and distribute also uh, the vaccine, uh, but it is also widely believed that the virus was produced in a laboratory. What is your position as a scientist on this issue? Yeah, so it's a good question. Uh, in this question, it, I think one of the reasons it remains out there is because uh, people keep talking about it all the time. Uh, however, I do not believe that this virus was produced in the lab. And there's enough scientific, to me, there's enough scientific evidence out there, scientific literature uh, published in great journals suggesting that this virus was not made in the lab. They have compared the backbone of this virus with its uh, molecular structure and provided enough information suggesting that this is not made in the lab. And I strongly believe on that. Uh, at the same time, when it comes down to, the, to developing a vaccine, uh, I think there needs to be quite a good amount of research to be done in order to come up with the best vaccine. So how do you target something that is dangerous to your body? You have to figure out how it works so that you can design something that is going to fight against it. So developing a vaccine, basically making an antigen that is going to trigger your body to produce antibodies and immune response against the, uh, against the virus, it's not the easiest thing to do, obviously, so, but, and it does take time. So you'd have to do research in the lab, significant amount of research to come up with the best antigens, and then go through preclinical pre trials and then clinical trials, and obviously, hopefully at the end of your uh, trials, your vaccine will be approved. But right now, it's not a single lab or single university working against it. It's almost the whole world trying to find the best vaccine that can fight against this virus. And uh, I'm hoping that this is going to take shorter time uh, to compare to other vaccines. Hopefully we may be able, or scientists may be able to get something out there within a year to 15 months. In order to be able to control the virus, we all have to be cautious and follow the criteria that are given to us. And uh, to completely get rid of the virus, 
it will take time. And if we are actually controlling the virus, that we may easily go back to uh, normality, but slowly at the same time by taking baby steps. So whenever we hit the peak with the positive cases and people being hospitalized, uh, the peak is eventually going to flatten out and start decreasing, right? During your PhD, you researched on proteins that could be used against cancer. Uh, how can this vulnerable group of people fight in the best way during this global pandemic? Right. So uh, during my PhD, I was working with bacterial toxin proteins and I was trying to target them towards cancer cells. That was my main project. Uh, cancer patients, they are already fighting against cancer, right? So their immune system is already fighting against cancer. Uh, and if they were to be infected with the virus, now they have to fight more if they can. I mean, their immune system has to fight more. And this puts them in a more difficult situation. And they're, again, their immune system, it's already fighting. And uh, the therapies that they're getting, it's already causing, may cause some problems to their immune system. So they would have to be very careful as well. Uh, and this goes, I mean, the same rules apply to them as well. Just as we are all aware, you know, keeping social distancing at least two meters away from one another and then trying to keep uh, good hygiene it is very important. What is your message to the Macedonian government and your colleagues, the doctors? Right. So uh, the best message I could give is that I am in all favor and supporting everybody out there who is in the front lines of this pandemic. It can be doctors, nurses, people working in the hospitals, doing whatever they need to do. They're definitely putting their lives uh, in, in the front lines of this pandemic. You know, they're fighting very hard. They're working overtime maybe, and uh, they're doing the best that they can do. And we all have to be in favor for them uh, because the medical doctors and nurses and people working in the hospital is basically what is right now helping us to recover if we were to be infected. Uh, and I'm in full support of them, whoever, it doesn't matter if it's government or, you know, some other agencies, whoever is helping to fight against this pandemic, we all should be in favor for them. And I am all in favor for them. Uh, and I hope the best for them. I hope they stay safe and then do what they can do the best to help us uh, stay safe and recover. Доктор Курдеви, благодарам за разговор. Те користам приликата да им честитам велик ден на сите православни верници што го славеа. Исто време на честитам месецот Рамазан на сите граѓани со муслиманската вероисповест и да благодарам.